we see the rise of separate but equal again. I know a black man who is pushing 50 years old, who posted something to the internet that bothered me for reasons you might not expect. It was a picture saying something about the first black woman to go to an all-white school in the South and that it was 64 years ago, if I recall the number correctly. And underneath that it said, just 64 years. For some of you, that might not seem that long ago, but for those of us who are younger, that is beyond our entire knowledge of this earth. I grew up without racism in my life. I was not introduced to real racism, except in caricatures and movies and news articles, but I had never really met an actual racist person. I still have not met anybody who is as racist as what I have seen in news articles and on television. The racism that I see today is coming from people who want to make everything about race. I grew up without racism as a major component or even a minor component of my life. I treat everyone equally. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you have between your legs. You are treated equally until you choose to behave in a way that gets you treated differently. Everyone is equal in the way that I choose to treat them initially. And from there, it's an individualistic change depending on where they want to go with the interaction. These people that are calling themselves anti-racist would like to take all of that back. We now see people who are calling for segregation not to discriminate against people who are not white, but instead to give unearned advantage to people who are not white, or at least supposedly an advantage. We see the rise of separate but equal again, this time in the name of anti-racism, ironically. The only people who are racist today are the anti-racists. And yes, you can point out outliers. Someone on Facebook actually was screeching about outliers. You can point out outliers in any given group that won't stop running their mouth and acting like a fool and try to extrapolate that out to a broad segment of the population inappropriately. But that's not the way that the real world works. Out of a thousand people that fall into a category, one person or two people or even ten people acting like idiots doesn't mean the whole thousand people are idiots. It just means those ten are. A rising tide can lift all boats. But for some reason, the modern face of so-called anti-racism is where all of the trees are kept equal by hatchet, axe, and saw. Is this the world we want to live in? Do we really want to combat bad things by doing bad things? Do we need to hurt other people to bring ourselves up? What can we do about the race issue today? There's a very simple solution to racism, and that is to stop making things about race. Stop talking about it. Morgan Freeman, I believe, said something to this effect. You stop being a white man, and I stop being a black man, and we both recognize we're just men. The problem is that humanity has evolved in such a manner that struggle is inherent in our blood. The person who wasn't worried about getting eaten by the tiger is the one that got eaten and died while the one that would panic and run away or try to defend himself proactively is the one that would survive. We have a need in our DNA to struggle. So when we run out of real struggles, we create them. I think that's what's actually happening today. We are dredging up old shit so that we can revive it and have a struggle because things are so comfortable. Today. My call to action for you today is to stop dredging up old shit to struggle over. We have plenty of things to worry about without adding fake racism to it, without reviving the KKK. 
you know, at this point, they're just a bunch of grouchy old people complaining over a barbecue that'll be dead in 30 or 40 years. So why are you even worried about them? No one's getting killed by the KKK today. It, they're like the boogeyman of anti-racists. But, you know, Grandpa's not exactly getting out there and beating the black man with his cane, if you get what I'm saying. So, let the old racists die. Stop trying to create new ones so that you'll have someone to fight against. Why do you need someone to fight against? The politicians are going to bend you over without lube either way. Why don't you fight against them instead? They're the ones who are pushing this race narrative so that you won't pay attention to what's really going on. Take care.